Hey folks, welcome back. Hey GG. We'll go to the river in a moment. Uh, a moment go only a while. Well yeah, because you're from the ocean. Money. Keep it up, sir. All right. We found the shitty ring. <laughs> Our delightful customer. Yeah, he's not fond of him. <laughs> I hope he punches him out. <laughs> he just calls him Satan. Oh, look at him. <laughs> he's got that hair. He's at least half devil. You know, I've been calling him the bird hair man. He's more of a slug haired man. We got that. Or a backwards duck, I guess. Yeah, this is an apology. Oh. You realize we fought sharks for this, right? A very wealthy couple. Bananas for antiques. <laughs> Antique bananas. I don't see why they don't just go buy it. I mean, there's lots of it. You know, full set, well... Full set of German pottery. Yes, Maybe yes, just I see. Like, I don't... Can, oh, I get it. Okay, we, we'll find a jar. <laughs> Let's pull out a random jar. Is this the jar? No, that that's not the jar. And then he takes it anyway. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Motion to just call up Nancy and have her order us a jar. Any objections? Small items and jars. Eh, be patient. I'm sure there's one in the ocean. Let's check around Greece. Get that to work. Density. Dense things. Dense. It, it should only have mass. I gotcha. Go to sleep in the cabin real quick, cause I want to see. I want to look through the telescope. All right, look you, at the moon you phases. You can look through the telescope during the day. But I can't see the moon phases no, during the day. But you can see things. But then I'll just discover a segment. But I know for a fact, according to my book, that there's things that you can see during certain moon phases. The moon phase right now is Jack. Jack oh. shit. Jack Moon. Got it. <laughs> yes, yes, we are under the Jack Moon. I love Jacks. They're so cool. I guess we should go serve the needs of the Tiki Idol. Yeah. F fulfill the Tiki desires. I've decided the Tiki's name is Jack now. Jack Tiki. <laughs> Jack Tiki. Let's go get Jack stuff. So he wanted two tusks. Yes. From the northern elephant. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if he's hoping we find mammoth tusks or what, but we'll, we'll find some tusks. You could dredge up a mammoth tusk. They do it sometimes. Yeah, well, we fi do often find, you know, full mammoth carcasses frozen in ice. That's how they found Ming. Do you know about Ming, Zorak? I'm not familiar with what you're referring Ming to. Ming is yeah. the oldest known living thing. Ming was a clam. Oh! Ming died shortly after being discovered. Oh, I remember hearing about this now. Yeah. That's neat. Forgot about that. There you go. Like, you know, they've recently found, like, quite a few w relatively well preserved mammoths, in, you know, in, uh, I think, like, Siberia esque in the Arctic? Siberia and the Aleutians. Yeah. Well, to the point where they actually were, like, were pulling it out and, like, oh, it, there, there's actual blood flowing out. That's pretty well preserved. Hey, a whale. Sorry, would you like to guess what type of whale that is? That is definitely a blue whale. Well, yeah, if you're going to cheat and look at the color. Well, technically from the underbelly, you only see the white of the blue. It was still blue. 
<laughs> Never guess the will till you see the white of the blues. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yes, we know, we're now covered in um, goo, which means we can swim here to our heart's content without it's having to It's black. Don't make it sound gross. <laughs> sea goo. Protective sea goo. Well, just here from a trip to the Antarctic, and all great, it's this jerk again. Hello. That was fast. God, they're so big. Yeah, whales are relatively passive, or at least not super aggressive, typically. But they, they will just... Knock you out of the way if you're in the they way. Did, they did have that diver that was knocked out by a whale recently. It's not on the news. Yeah. They, they tend not to try, but they, they kind of just don't care sometimes. They're big enough that, yeah, if you go near them in the wrong place, it's like being hit by a truck. Yeah. Underwater. Ooh, ribbon seal. That's cool. Got cool colorations. They're born pure white, though, so, like most seals. Oh, I hope we see some baby seals up here. Well, let's find out. I psyched myself up for this. Oh, well, it's a baby seals. Oh. That's more bearded seals. Oh, but it's, they're so cute, right? Yeah. Oh, good lord, yeah. Kind of disorientating looking the fish swimming from below them like that. Mm. Just me. I don't know. From personal hand experience. Eh. I've done it too. Oh hey! Land spiny lump suckers. Ah, spiny good little holes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, lump suckers are neat. Sorry, right, we like to ask what lump suckers do. Uh, they suck on things using their, their, their Do you know specifically things. what they suck? No. Lumps! Well, well yeah. I thought you were going for something else. No! They suck lumps. That's why they're called lump suckers. Yeah. So, what's your favorite lump sucker? Uh, toad lump sucker. That's good. Toady. Great toady. There's actually, actually a fish industry built around them. Talking about you love narwhals. I love narwhals. That's what I'm talking about right now. You will come later, narwhal. Do you know what narwhal means? Yeah, it means toothed whale, horned whale. Negative. It means corpse whale. Like oh, that's right. Crap! I knew this. Ah! Tooth whale is a dontaseti. You're right. I forgot. I knew this. I knew this. Hey, you found a tusk. There we go. There you go. Hey, Chopin. You are Chopin. <laughs> it's me. I'm Chopin. 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 Look, mine is accepted. <laughs> Please don't. They'll yell at me again. I know they will. <laughs> ah, that narwhal tusk is going to be worth money. No, it's not, because Tiki Idol's gonna get it. Would you like to know something really Ooh. truthful? You are mm. breaking the law right now. <laughs> by having a you, by having a fragment or part of a marine mammal that is against the law. You well, can be prosecuted. You can do it for science, though. Yeah, but you don't have a thing to take the parts. You don't know that. You don't. You don't know that. You don't, though. You don't know that, though. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you're on the beach and you come across a whale skeleton, it is illegal to have part of the whale. Well, skeleton. well, yes, yes. The average person, true. They just stay away from marine mammals. Just don't go near them. Yeah. Well, you can let them go near you, though. Yes. Well, what type of shark I already looked at that. 
Chopin, I already looked at it. I already looked at that one. I want you to look at it. I already looked at this, Chopin. Thank Likes you, though. It. It's such a pretty little comb jelly. Greenland shark. I see him. Uh, but yeah, it's actually, I believe, it's in general, they, it's illegal to just, in general, approach or try to directly interact with a mammal other than for scientific purposes, period. Well, not a mammal. Oh, no, like yeah, a marine animal. mammal. A marine mammal. Sorry. That's like the thing with like manatees is that you can't chase after a manatee. But if a manatee comes up to you, you can let it touch you or touch it if it comes up to you. Don't you hug can't it, pursue. Though. Please don't hug yeah. the manatee. Don't ride the manatee. You will, you will get you will be taken to court for. God, there's right. so many mammals right here. Oh my god! It smells of mammal. Oh my god! So cute. You know those are in here just because it's fucking cute. Yeah. Oh, there's a little one! Yeah. Ah, oh, eat that little fish, buddy. The sea otter in Hydra Lutris is the heaviest mustelid and the smallest marine mammal. They're fucking adorable, yo. While the sea otter can and does on occasion walk on land, they spend the majority of their life at sea, feeding on clams, snails, scallops, sea urchins, and that sort of thing. They dive beneath the water to grab them, storing them in pouch-like pockets. Aww. They're pretty unlike every other marine mammal in quite a few ways. They have no blubber or particularly insulating skin to keep them warm in the waters they frequent, the northern Pacific Rim. Instead, they rely on thick fur to insulate them and keep warm. They have up to 150,000 strands of hair per square centimeter, the densest fur of any animal. Unlike other marine mammals, they catch their prey using their hands, not their jaws, and in a rather iconic image, will lay on their back on the surface while eating, using their chest like an adorable dinner plate. Aww. They have to eat quite a bit, too, in order to keep up with their high metabolic rate. A sea otter eats 25-38% to 38 of its own body weight in food each day in order to counteract the cold temperatures they live in. Sea otters are fairly complex animals in terms of their behavior. They're one of the few mammal species that uses tools. In order to open hard shells, or probably particularly stubborn shellfish off a rock, the sea otter will strike their prey with rocks at observed rates as high as three blows a second. That's pretty fast. Sea otters, like many mustelid species, form social communes of sorts. While adults hunt alone, they tend to mingle and rest together in single-sex groups that have, adorably, been dubbed rafts. These rafts typically contain between 10 to 100 animals, sleeping on the surface while holding paws. Aww. The largest raft ever recorded was a massive 2,000 sea otters. I, I can't deal with that. Sea otters don't form long-term reproductive relationships. They tend to stick to same-sex groupings, and the females often outnumber the males. As a result, sea otters are polygynous. Males form many temporary pairings with females. The result of these pairings is typically a single pup, with twins rather rarely. A mother otter with multiple pups is quite rare. Pups tend to mature to independent juveniles within a year. Female sea otters have quite the reputation as good mothers, helped by the fact that they're so damn adorable. Female sea otters give their pups almost constant attention when they're not foraging, cradling them on their chest to keep them out of the water, grooming their fur, teaching them to, how to start foraging. They've even been observed adopting orphan pups. And when the pup prematurely dies, mother sea otters have been known to continue to carry their pup on their chest for days, which is adorably depressing. A depressingable, if you will. The sea otter is rated as endangered by the IUCN and is protected throughout its range. It's thought that they once had a population as high as 300,000 in the Pacific, which began to dwindle in the 1700s due to the fur trade. While the population once was as low as a couple thousand, they have since rebounded and it's believed that the global population is in the range of about 107,000. The sea otter has actually been a very useful tool for marine conservation groups, given how fucking adorable they are. They are keenly affected by things like oil spills due to their limited ability to move away from them, and the oil completely eliminates their fur's ability to retain air, and thus keep them rather warm. Not to mention the fact that oil just poisons them outright. 
When the Exxon Valdez oil spill occurred on March 24th, 1989, thousands and thousands of sea otters were killed in the Prince William Sound in the Gulf of Alaska. Their behavior and appearance did much to garner public sympathy and draw media coverage to the catastrophe. As the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service spokesman wrote, As a playful, photogenic, innocent bystander, the sea otter epitomized the role of the victim. Cute and frolicsome sea otters suddenly in distress, oiled, frightened, and dying in a losing battle with the oil. The fact that sea otters typically have a very specific and geographically isolated range means that ecological disasters in those localities can completely destroy local populations as well. It's also apparent that in populations near the mainland United States, parasitic infections transmitted to them via sewage hospital has been severely impacting the population, with the feline Toxoplasmus gondii being transmitted through fecal waste to the vulnerable sea otter. Still, the sea otter is doing better than it has in the past, and the adorable charisma of the sea otter has done a lot to drive people to support conservation causes worldwide. Because everybody loves the sea otters. They're just too fucking cute! Ugh. You should be eating shellfish. Yes, they should. I'm also not sure they're actually found this far into the ice. They're probably fine. Yeah, I'm sure they're fine. I mean, you know, trapped in a little breathing hole. Yeah. Like, yeah. God, they're cute. So adorable. He's not Wells. Go rub that with your face. I'll do it for science. Good, because I can't talk about it till you start poking it. Is that really coming at me? Oh yeah, get him! Get him chopping! You realize he went so slow past him, right? He showed him who was boss. No, he didn't. He ran away. He showed him who was boss. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about them. The Greenland shark, Somniosis microcephalus, is the only known truly subarctic shark, being found along the coast of eastern Canada, Greenland, and northern Europe. The Greenland shark is a surprisingly large animal, rivaling or equaling the great white in size. They are big, slow, lumbering things, and I love them for it. They're fairly slow in every way. The Greenland shark grows only about a centimeter a year. This is shocking when you consider the Greenland sharks can reach a length of roughly six and a half meters. It's over 20 feet. Due to the inability to age specimens in ways we can bony fish, it's estimated these factors point to them living in excess of 200 years. They are old and slow. So slow that their max speed is only about one and a half miles an hour. A trait the Greenland shark is known for are its proclivity being parasitized by the copepod, Amatacoida alungata. Copepods are a type of crustacean, some of which regularly attach themselves to the fins and bodies of fish. But a monocoid attached to something a little more specific. The eyes of Greenland sharks. Yeah, these feed on the corneal tissue, causing lesions and eventual blindness. The shark's fine, though, due to its other senses making up for its lack of sight and the fact that it lives at depths and under ice that are usually devoid of light. Some researchers have claimed that the copepods are bioluminescent and sort of function as lures for the shark, but there's no actual proof that they do this. The Greenland shark is an apex predator of the northern waters, feeding on nearly anything that comes across, dead or alive. Primarily, the species seems to be a scavenger in the remains of horses, dogs, narwhal, porpoises, polar bears, and even an entire goddamn caribou have found in the stomachs of these things. So what eats the Greenland shark then? Well, there are two issues with this, but I'll get to that. The only known natural predator of the Greenland shark was a single sperm whale named Trifon, documented preying on them on two separate occasions. Unfortunately, Trifon died in 2009 after becoming entangled in fishing gear. Trifon's teeth were severely worn down to smooth stubs, the same condition as a pod of orcas teeth off British Columbia. The orcas had been feeding on the related Pacific sleeper shark. 
The tough, identical-covered skin of the two sleeper sharks wears down whale's teeth over repeated feedings, to the point the orca's teeth pulps are exposed. The other issue is the flesh of Greenland sharks is poisonous, like the actual meaning of the word poisonous. The flesh of the Greenland shark is chock full of two things. One of these is urea. It smells like ammonia and dead fish. The flesh also contains the toxic trimethylamine oxide. When this toxin is digested, it breaks down, producing effects similar to extreme drunkenness. High levels of this will also lead to convulsions, possibly death. Now, there is a way to render this edible, and I have no idea how this was figured out. Probably out of desperation, but whatever. If the shark is boiled several times, changing out the water each time, or if it's dried and fermented for months, it becomes edible-ish. Traditionally, this is done by essentially burying it for a few weeks and then hanging it in strips to dry for months. This thing, called hakarl, the Icelandic for shark, is considered a delicacy in Iceland and Greenland. Really just kind of seems like a prank they play on tourists, I'm not gonna lie. Either way, God bless you, Greenland shark. You're a nearly blind, slow-moving scavenger of the north that smells like piss. You're a majestic creature and surely something we will all aspire to be. Glass shark. Yeah, it is. And they're so big. That's the thing most people don't realize is that they are massive, massive, massive sharks. Hey, hey more seagulls. Thank you. I'm glad you showed me this. They, they are very cute, Chopin. Thank you. Thank you, Chapin. Thank you, Chappy. No, the shark's coming. Yeah. The Greenland shark, it's little known, is very lazy. I <laughs> <laughs> moved ten feet, I give up. Well, like I said, they're mostly blind. I can smell them. There's mammals everywhere here. Oh, it's another one. Or is that the same one? I don't. I know. think that's the same one because you turned around. To You're right. I did. When you when you grabbed Chupin's thing. Yeah, stay. I did. Oh, I also use this as a good chance to start clearing up the map. Uh -huh. Get some of the map dollars. The Arctic is not very big. Well, the well, Arctic it, is it's, very it's, big. It's massive. I don't know what you're talking about. The Arctic is very big. It's big and cold and empty. Apparently, the north coast of Canada, however, is not very large. Have you seen how big Canada is? <laughs> well, look Do here. Do you know how much coastline Canada has? Well, well, look how much distance we're covering right here. <laughs> we must be going really fast. Oh, yeah. We're right at Chippendale. Yeah, I don't think any of these Greenlands can catch us when we're riding no, around the Chupacabra. So, like, how do you feel about cold weather? Cold climates in general, if you will. Uh, see, it's how I've lived in warm, very warm climates for quite a while now. Yeah, but you're originally uh, from a cold climate, right? True, true. I am originally from a cold climate, but I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of cold water diving either. Well, it's, it's fine, but eh, I don't know. I just don't like being cold. I, I, I've, I've tried, like, diving in the middle of, like, December from, like, a beach, and it's miserable. Though that's also just because trying to dive directly from a beach can be pretty miserable. Yes. Trying to w trying to wade out with all the gear on top of you, when especially in heavy wave action, it's just like, uh... Yeah. It's like, I would like to pass. I just grew up in the south, so... Hey! Hey, or these dudes. Mariachi fans. That's what they are. Well, aren't we all? Are we? <laughs> Want you to introduce me to an animal that dislikes mariachi, and I'll introduce you to an animal that's going to get punched in the face. The chinchilla. <laughs> Those chinchillas are dead. Right. Dead to me, I say. That's not even a joke. Well, that's, that's what it's like living in the South. That's like what it's like living in Miami. 
That's what it's like living in the deep south. You hear mariachi and samba and just all sorts of crazy things from all across the Latin American world. Yes. <sighs> Only they could leverage both of them into a unified musical style. Why would you want to mariachi do Mariachi samba. Some sort of samba. unified field of mariachi theory? <laughs> Your physicist is showing. <laughs> Look. This is by my nature to want to combine things. Oh. Samba, Hey, Greenland shark! Use a fuck! Tease him! Use a fuck! I'll go hide by the narwhals. Yeah, they'll defend you. Yeah, with all their... With all their pointiness. Horns. Yeah. The narwhals are, in fact, the pointiest of marine mammals. Um... Eh? Goblin that's shark. A, that's in that. Okay, one goblin sharks aren't marine mammals. Oh, I thought you said animals. Damn I it, didn't I must say mammals. And even then, I would say the sea urchin is the pointiest of sea animals. I can't think of anything sea mammal. That's your pointier. I'm just mishearing everything today. You are. It's because of the cold water. <laughs> it's because of all these. We should get you back to the Pacific. <laughs> it's because of all these spiny love suckers I've been sticking. Oh, uh, he's here. just kind of. Hating his life. <laughs> just watch, watch and stuff. Yeah, he's just kind of there. Yeah, GG is reading a book. I don't think he's reading... I know that... Uh, he's what's reading a book. The professor reads a book. I think he's just sitting there, just being bored. I don't know. I think he, he's meditating. He's meditating on treasure. We'll have to look into this later. <laughs> well, we, we, will, we will have to look into this. Just what is GG doing when we're in the water? Uh, maybe he's playing a, a Game Boy. He brought a Game maybe. Boy. Maybe! A Game Boy made entirely out of gold. It's one of those rare, limited edition, gold-encrusted Game Boys. Uh. Oh! <laughs> it's a bet. We no, should that's go no home. Storm. It's too cold. Have you noticed this happens every time you dive with the porpoise? Yeah. <laughs> this is cold and miserable, and I want to go home. John Eric telling us a story, as you can see in the background. Yeah. One time I was in a blizzard, songs. it was so bad, I had to eat someone. Grandpa, is that true? <laughs> what do you think, Lynx? I think you're making it up. <laughs> Let's go somewhere home. Somewhere home. Let's go home. <laughs> Let's go somewhere home. Home, home, home on the range where the uh, sea deer and sea antelope play. And then Grandpa tells us a discouraging word. And the sky is, it's, it's, you know, some light clouds all day. Yes, yes, okay, we finished the map. Give us the money. Oh boy, oh boy. You know what that means? Just tell us our title. I don't even care about the money. Oh my god. That's really weird, considering it was a map of the Arctic. And we're no, the they're, talk, they're talking about the previous one. The previous one is selling, oh. is what they're saying. So our, our deep hole map is oh. selling a lot of money. We didn't get a title. I'm sad. But we got a bandana. I don't like that it's spelled with three M's. <laughs> oh, yay. We, we can map out the Sister of Strait, I guess. Also, see Dracula's castle. They are separate maps, so... It's true. We'll probably have to go back there sometime soon. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, Shanna, you're... Only temporary, ideas. though, because Grandpa doesn't approve. <sighs> uh, Shanna, your, your decisions on what to use your money on are quite, quite good. Yay! See a title? A northern swan. Ah, turtle swan. A northern oh, bathosphere. <laughs> a veritable swan. <laughs> a northern upperclassman. Northern yes, yes. We'll go there in a moment. Let me 
we go talk to the professor. Okay. Yes, I knew that. Thank you. Yes. I was just it's asking how while. your day was. Let's go look at our records. It's been a while since we look at our records. So we've only traveled about eight miles underwater, apparently. We spent quite a lot of time under there, though. I can't see the salvaged items. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, one photo request, but none of them well, were published. We... But we, they published that they one. They decided though. not to publish it. Something more breaking happened. Oh. Who? I told you. Hmm. Look at all those places we haven't dove yet. Yeah. We haven't released any animals into the reef, apparently, either. We haven't been to the reef. We should go there at some point. We well, should go there again. We've went there once, but we haven't seen if it's oh, done anything. Oh, we're six things away from a new thing. Ooh. Oh, a present. Soon. Are you pumped for present? Ooh, I am pumped for present. Okay. We should be a thing. Oh. Traum Comet. And I could be a turtle swan. Let's be a turtle swan. Or a blue ibis. I think a scarlet ibis, but not. <laughs> Nancy, I need you to come here. It's really important. The ibis trigger. <laughs> please, please bring a bandana. Okay, we're going to the Amazon, and I need Amazon hair. Can you not cut it and just put the bandana on? Could you teach me how to tie the bandana? Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty Amazony ready. You tied a bandana! That's not a hair salon quality! <laughs> hair salon quality bandana. Whatever. Alright, folks. I think it's time. Time for River. River Phoenix. 